Now we've seen some of these log files, but why don't we take a look now at how the content gets into this log files? So looking at the system logging daemons that we have on CentOS 7. Now I'm still working as my root user as you can see. But let's move into the etc directory and again PWD will show us where we currently are in the system. If I go through and from here, if I list our sys log and then just choose star after that, we can see then that we've got the rsyslog.conf and then the rsyslog.d, an extension directory that has one file within it. Our main configuration is going to be in the rsyslog.conf, but we could extend it into the rsyslog.d. But let's just work through with the conf at the moment. Our syslog is the rocket fast syslog daemon and it improves on the standard syslog daemon in the fact it's going to be quicker and it also can integrate with various database systems. If I go through and take a look inside, so if I go through and vi rsyslog.conf, clear this out, we can move that to the top of the screen and then we can see some of the things that we see straight away are the modules that can be loaded and this then can provide support for us so that we're able then to write through to databases rather than just flat files if we want. If we start moving down though a little, now when we start looking at our rules section we can start understanding how our content gets into the file. Let's take a look at var log secure because we were looking at that just a few moments ago. We can see then that first of all auth priv and that's the facility. We have a certain number of facilities that we could use. They don't represent every single service. However, I think when they originally started this within the Unix environment, they did think they were going to have facilities for each service because we do see older facilities such as the NNTP, the Network News Transfer Protocol. We have then the facility and then the dot and the level of the message and the level of the message can really run through from debug through to emergency. So again we have levels that we can choose. When we have authpriv.star we're then sending everything from the facility authpriv. We can see below that we have then mail.star going through to var log mail log. We have cron.star going through to var log cron. Below that we then have the star.emerg and that's then going to be sent through to a module. It's a module that's used to send out to all consoles. If we move up a little bit and take a look at var log messages, we can see here that we're sending anything of dot info or higher. So where we have a level mentioned, we include that level and higher. But then we don't include anything from mail, authpriv or uh, cron. So our authentication messages, our mail and cron messages don't get through into our normal log file. But everything from info and above goes through to var log messages. So when we're looking at log files, that definitely is a log file to take a look at when things are going wrong on your system. It's your first port of call. If we take a look at maybe adding in our own rule, let's just move up on the screen just so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to add in a rule here. So if I go through and hit insert, and then we can use say local one. We have various local facilities that we can then assign to our own services. Maybe we've got a script and rather than write to a standard file, we want it to have to go to our syslog daemon. So we might say then that it will send out messages as the facility local 1. And we've got local 0 through to local 7 that we can use. And then we might say our uh, info messages. So this is going to be info and higher. And we're going to send this through to the file forward slash far forward slash log forward slash. I'm just going to send it to the file Andrew. That doesn't exist at the moment, but we'll see that we will create that file. I can then go through and save this and now restart the syslog daemon. So I can then go through and use systemctl restart and then rsyslog. If we go through and take a look at the status, 
we should be able to see that this is up and running. So we can see a nice green symbol there with active and running, and it's been running there for seven seconds. Just about right, really, isn't it? Now, to be able to test this, if we go through and use the logger command, a minus P, we can then go through and specify where the message is coming from. So we're going to say then local one dot warn. Remember, we said info or higher, so warning is slightly higher than uh, info, so that should go to where we want it. And then we can go through and specify test message or whatever we want to do. So we could easily build this into a script. When we go through and take a look, now we should be able to see this in our var log messages. So if I go through and run tail forward slash var forward slash log forward slash messages. So we can see there that we're getting in then the test message. So this is just proving then that our system logging is working. But remember, we wanted it to go through to our own new file. So let's go through and take a look at the file, Andrew. We can see there that we've got then the test message as well showing in there. So of course, it still went through to the var log messages because we're logging everything through to there. But we can then also specify it to go to our own dedicated file. And you can see that it created the log file and log the message through to it. So hopefully this gives you an idea of getting your system logging up and running. Let's now take a look at how we rotate these log files.